Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. It's time for the Bonnie Cher Show, a whirlwind of wit, wisdom, celebrity, and the boomer life. With a little bit of this and a lot of that and so much more you don't want to miss, here's Bonnie. Well, hello there, old friends and new. Uh, thank you for tuning in and joining us. First of all, a big thank you to Wayne Cobham for my super duper theme song. Uh, today, I'd like to welcome all of you. And uh, joining me today is a drummer who is par excellence, who's one of the working as guys I know. Um, a fabulous soul and a phenomenal musician, and that's John Stewart. And then we have with us as our T1 co-host, someone fairly new to the T1D community, um, and his name is Dave Grubo, and he will be here to share his story with you as well. So, for right now, why don't you all settle in? Um, you can please join our conversation if you'd like. You can call in to 323-483-2826. Or you can follow the hashtag BShareRadio. That's hashtag B-S-H-E-R Radio on Twitter. So, let's pull it together, settle in, and please say hello to my first guest, John Stewart. Hey, Bonnie. Hey there. How are you? I'm great. Good Seeing to see you, you is always just a joy. Likewise. You're the smilingest musician I know. I, I, uh, yeah, really. I, I mean, have fun. It, That's what this shows, whole thing's about. It so shows. Um, I'll let you all know uh, at the top of this that not only has John worked with a, a myriad uh, 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 of performers, but I am very honored that he's a part of my posse as well. So that's how we know each other. Yes. Um, you know, it, it, it amazes me, all of you drumming people, that um, you can do so many things at once. And uh, I don't particularly have that, but you were telling me an interesting story in the green room about how all of this started. I mean, how did you start banging on stuff? How did I start banging on stuff? Uh -huh. hmm. Interesting question, <laughs> but a great one to begin with. Um, I was five when I started playing drums, and I actually began playing um, with my father, who actually taught me how to play uh, a roll you know, with drumsticks and brushes. So I actually... I think I had the sticks in my hand for maybe like 10 or 15 minutes. And then I went immediately to brushes. And I think the reason why I did that is because I had, I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but um, I couldn't hear my mistakes as well. As well. <laughs> so I could like blend and sweep. I go, this is pretty cool. So I actually kind of started everything, this whole journey with brushes. And, you know, my dad played, um, he was a Chicago police officer. Uh, he had a master's in anthropology. He was kind of a different kind of a guy. I'd say. Um, Do you, were you, no, you're not an only child. You had siblings. No, I have siblings, yeah. I'm, I'm a middle child. I have an older brother and older sister. Um, and then Any of them of the musical? Ver yeah. Everybody in my family. You all got a home. dose of it, did yeah, you? Isn't yeah. that sweet? Yeah, my bro I have my brother Mitch is on staff at per Berkeley School of Music in Boston. He plays guitar and... 
you know. So, uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of was the tradi- the tradition of my house. We, uh, I just remember growing up and being surrounded with music all the time from either my bedroom where all the, you know, all the guys were at. I, I slept in a triple bunk bed till I was like 20. <laughs> okay, and my sister was in the next room and she'd be listening to some other music. So we would all we'd listen to everything from classical to jazz to rock and roll to big band stuff. And some of my favorite now, memories yeah. with my dad was listening to music, taking sides with him. So. My ears opened up pretty quick, you know. Uh, there's another story that you started to tell um, mm-hmm. when somebody in the green room asked you who your guru, who your idol, who some of, and you came up with an answer that just blew me away. Would you please share well, that with the gang? <laughs> well, first of all, I really don't have a specific guru or a go-to guy because yeah. well this one was pretty cool well I, I they asked me who my one of my big major influences that's was. the word yeah i'm getting and, older i'm forgetting and uh um i told him frank lloyd wright would you, you want to throw that one or whatever that kinda, was your kinda odd right well yeah. yeah well i was very much influenced in with Music and art and architecture, uh, visually, uh, spatially, and then the manipulation of time with rhythm and all that was, was obviously what my life's journey has been about. But I was at one time I wanted to be an architect. I mean, I studied that, and I still have the a- application of going to Tilius and East when I was a kid. I was going to do that, but uh, one of the prerequisites of joining and being part of that is being able to build your own little house and then being musical being able to create and play uh, your own musical instrument so at an early age I remember seeing some stuff of him um, and it just immediately That's caught me amazing yeah. I, I mean I totally get it's what pa- they uh, I mean it's brilliant. it's part of the same brain I of mean course. I remember when I finally finally first went and went on a tour of one of his buildings the Hollyhock house out here uh, the Barnstall house and I remember I took it to I said let me let me go because I knew a lot about him and stuff so I went in there and we were on a tour so we're walking through the tour and seeing the house, and I remember walking in that living room, and it just totally came over me. I'd leave the group, and I just started weeping. Were we crying. a little moved? Yeah. It was so spiritual to me. I was like, this guy is way Have ahead of his time. Have you ever seen the house? It's another Frank Lloyd. Um, I'm thinking it's like way, way out in the valley, and it was owned by director, writer, producer Arch Obler. Arch Obler's Arch lights Obler. out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I was, I did some voiceover work up at the house, and he had this one wall surrounding the fireplace, and it was all semi-precious stones. Yeah, I mean, just every little touch and every line. You did. You, I, I can see your response of just wanting to. Cry. Well, yeah, it's he's it's very spiritual. Uh, spiritual, his 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 stuff. I mean, it's like three dimensional art. You're like walking through it, and it's like it's it's amazing. So, so tell me how that so, plays in. I mean, I mean, where I think, is there a spatial situation? I mean, when you're when you're drumming, where's your head? Where's my I mean, head? I know it's Supp- got to be kind of on the music. It definitely is on the music. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, I, I think I'm just very sensitive and receptive to everything that's around me, whether it's uh, of a rhythmical nature or of an aesthetic nature around me. I'm very, even my clothes, I mean, my clothes to me are like, I mean, when I was, I remember my mom telling me when I was two years old, I mean, for Christmas, you get all these gifts and stuff like that. And my grandmother would give you gifts and they'd see John and they go, oh. He likes his clothes. I didn't care about the toys. The toys I put down, but if they got me a nice sweater, I go, boy, that's cool. I, I would like the sweater. But I was always, I, I don't know, I was hardwired that way. I don't know. So if you were to have chosen another path, or even today, would would you consider going into architecture at this point and studying well, more? Well, let's put it, well, um, I've always been a fan, seat of the fan pants fan of it i mean as we speak now i'm i just spoke to an architect a couple days ago i'm getting ready to 
redo my place. I did all my place. I bought a house that was built in 1939, a streamlined, modern, art deco kind of a thing. That's and cool. Yeah, and I had um, 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 a contractor. Actually, I did some construction work for a while, and uh, he came over and saw my work. He's like, wow, he was assembling a staff to put together to create something of that nature in the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, and he wanted me to be a consultant. Daddy's place. Yeah, Daddy's place. Yeah. How cool is that? To be that? a consultant for that, and here I am, a drummer. I mean, oh, you know, oh, but, sure. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but I'm you very, do. But you are. You. You. It seems like you're involved in lots of different I things. Am. I am. I mean, even the day that we met, and you and you came in for me at like last minute, and after two hours. We were we were tight. Oh, real tight. I mean, I mean, I I would say in that specific situation, I remember after ten minutes. Yeah. I mean, I remember walking up there, your hallway, going in there, and I remember opening the door, and Wayne was there, and Mario was there. You guys were just, I think they had just gotten in, they just flown in, and they had a great time. Everybody was laughing. I was like, man, this is great. I was so welcomed. It was so warm. You guys obviously had such a great history together. So I really enjoyed that. So that was now great. you're part of the community. gang, and oh, I awesome. love that. Yeah. But there's Can't something, I mean, we're still not done because there's mm. still more here. Um, you're also a therapist. Well, I do, I do some, uh, I know I got so much stuff going on. Well, I, that's I, well, good. It'll keep you off the street. Yeah, well, what had happened is I had, <laughs> I had migraine headaches for about 20 years. And I was going to a body work person, body massage person, and um, he got certified to do this neural feedback, this EEG neural feedback called Lens, low energy neural feedback. So he's like, John, I'll just work on you for a little while, and you know, you're basically healthy. I want to see how it works. Get my log some hours on you. I was like, fine. So after like four or five sessions of doing this, I noticed my migraine headaches went away. I'm like, this is insane. There's something real to this. So I'm like, okay, so I decided, and he was working on me uh, a couple weeks after, and I said, John, you know who would be really good at this? I said, who? He said, you. So I was like, oh, boy. So I wound up, I like a challenge, Bonnie. Yes, I know. <laughs> so, so I, I, I can take that. Yeah, I, so I got certified doing that, so I'm helping people with that. Yeah. Good on you. Yeah. Good on thing. you. you got to give back somehow, Bonnie. you got to work. I mean, that's what I try to do with the music. I mean. You know, I'm involved in some charitable events, and those are the ones that are the, the most fun, I think, for me at this point. You know, and so I'm I'm busy with that. So with the house and with the the neurofeedback thing and all the music and the gigs I'm doing, and not to mention the book. I, you know, wait, I've been doing you, you can't come on my show and say not to mention. Could you please mention the book? Oh uh, well, sure. Well, sure. Um, well. You know, it's th this whole thing that's been going on in my life for the last, I'd say, four or five years I've been amassing. Since I started with brushwork, that's one of the things I feel I'm pretty proficient at. And having looked at a lot of the YouTube stuff that's on up now and seeing how everybody has their specific methodology, their approach mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. uh, in my humble opinion, I think my generation of players and drummers are doing a really good job at it, but we could be doing a lot more. We could be doing better. And I think I've come up with something to codify the language and actually come up with something now that uh, will serve as a good methodology, a good standardized approach and how to, how to present it to, you know, upcoming young drummers coming on now and my hope is is to get it in the, the school systems the musical school sure. systems. do you so, teach yeah i do some teaching yeah private teaching yeah uh -huh. well, if um any of our listeners audience want to learn more about you or how can they follow you John? you can find me at m r boom chic mr boom chic at uh -huh. gmail <laughs> no k at the end it's just b-o-o-m-c-h-i-c and you're a Facebooker. I'm a Facebooker. Mm -hmm. And there is also a website, is there not? Well, that's another thing I'm involved in doing, that I'm redoing my website right now, so it's actually not And you still and had time to come here and see me? <laughs> yes. Yay. I wasn't going to miss that. I'm happy well, to um, it sounds like life is pretty exciting. Yeah. As I was preparing for today's show, um, 
I mean, obviously, I had read your bio when you first, before you first started to work with me. Um, but I did take a second look, see, just to refresh myself last night. And there is a list of, of people that you have performed with that I think went on for three paragraphs or so without the indentations, it, just major. And then at the very, very bottom it says, and others. So um, if you're looking on that list, my name is now and other. So <laughs> you know, that's good. G- give us a cup. I mean, you started you can, back. You got the list in front of you. I don't remember. I no, mean, actually, I, mean, I just have how to get the, the, the guest to talk about how he can be followed. Yeah. yeah. Well, name one. Well, I. Ha, ha, ha. S- Spencer Davis. I played, I played some stuff sure. with Spencer Davis. Yeah, I'm a man that whole bit. Um, which I wasn't at the time, but um, and then uh, Louis Belson, I got to be good pals oh, with Louis. That's... Louis was a big influence on me. Louis was a big influence on me. He's a beautiful guy. I don't know if you met him, but he's a he was a great guy, and uh, um, he helped me a lot. I mean, he was. Uh, I wound up getting a chance to do some good things with him through uh, uh, the diversity of a percussion ensemble that I was involved in. Oh. Uh, at Oakton Community College uh, under the direction of Jake Jerger, who was another big influence on me. He was a staff guy at, uh, like, CBS at the time, I guess, and he was a um, he, uh, single lung clinician and later on Ludwig clinician, educator there, um, and he knew everybody. I mean, so, anyways, he introduced me and uh, got me started with Louie, and I wound up doing some stuff with Louie later when I was going to DePaul School of Music and with a big band and... I keep forgetting you're a Chicagoan, yeah. too. Well, yeah. that's where well, it all comes that's from. That's where it all came from. Yeah, yeah talent. Also, is right that what there. It is? Yeah. yeah. Lakeshore Drive as you yeah. drive down. Yeah. 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 If you don't fall into the lake, you get talent. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, I mean, I also think that coming up in the time that we did, how blessed we were. I mean, Big when time. when I think of people that formed and molded my desire to be a performer as well as the type of performance I wanted to be able to give. Look who I had to look at. Some of the best of the best. I'm sorry, but I'm still waiting for somebody to top that in terms of the entire package. Correct. And being able to rely on who you are and your own talent, and even if you are, it just, there's so much more there, there, you know, and I think, like, the show that I went to see with, I'm sorry, I've forgotten his name. Mark. Mark. Mark, Mark Arthur Miller. Um, yep. Mark's another one. He's, He's a awesome. very old soul when he performs. Very much also. And it's, when you see people work like that, it, it's like seeing an old friend. Uh, yeah. You know, you walk in and it's the music that you know, and it's all here yeah. in the eyes when and you can s- lock. And it's celebrated in real time with someone who actually lived through the era. And That's has, the thing. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, what is my granddaughter, who is now four, going to have to look up to other than me, of course, and John. But, I mean, really, I, I, it, it just isn't the same thing. It's the money, and it's the flash, and it's all the technology. My God, I could have been on Mars if I had had all of that. Yeah. Well, I just think it just it, it's even more important that we preserve that Absolutely. for us because we're the generation, we're the people that's actually still holding on to that because there was good melodies then. I mean, how many shows you go to now that you go walk back to the car on your way home and you want to go get a coffee or something and you start remembering a melody or whistling a melody? All the great melodies were like written already. That's how I feel. Well, there are eight notes, you know, (laughs) so pretty much you're going to stumble here and there. But um, I don't know. I, I think that with a Broadway show like Hamilton... Mm-hmm. Just the press alone have driven those seats. I am hard pressed to ever consider a, going to a scalper who's going to charge me twenty thousand dollars for a seat for two and a half hours for twenty grand for a seat for two and a half hours. I want to be in Paris uh, on a speedy plane. You know? I'm with you. And 
so it, it, everything is so expedited yes. now. There's kind of no bottom to it. Yeah, it's all very much up here to me. I don't really get any. Guts I also at think it. I also think uh, the nature of the internet and what it's done to music is because now it's more of a global representation with all the cultural uh, overflow of all the rhythmical uh, things that's coming from different parts of the country. And along with that came the loss of the profits by the artists. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. But on the same token, when you think about it, Bonnie, it's almost like, you know, our parents and everything, what you were listening to, what I was listening to, I'm sure they were maybe concerned a little bit too for the next generation. Yeah, my mother was drinking. She, she, she was, was drinking. concerned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Drink it. Yeah. But I, th- I still think we're going to be in good hands. I th- there's there's so much talent out there. Isn't great, there, though? There's great talent out there. I do marvel at young talent. Yeah. That's something that yeah. I learned from yeah. my years with Sammy Davis Jr. is that sort of sad, keep an eye on these kids. Yeah. And some of them are just mind-blowing. Yeah, they really and are. And some of them have a lot to learn. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as the passion's with them, I think it's, everything May gets the driven passion with the, be, be with, with you. you. That's, I, that's my saying. Yeah. Well, we'll cancel what something wants to talk to me. Okay. Um, John. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bonnie. We're not in What's rehearsal. What's it now? No. What did, you, what did I <laughs> do now? now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. Thank you. Oh, you. thank Just you. Just thank you. It's a delight to see you all the time. And not only has my audience learned, I've learned. I mean, who knew? You know, because whenever I see you, you'll excuse me, you're banging. I know. You know, That's so what I talking do. is That's a very cool deal. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, follow John on Facebook. Um, you know how to contact him. Watch for him in shows coming up. I promise you, you're going to be happy that you did. Do we have a title yet for the book about brushing? Well, I think it's musical motion is what it's going to be. And who even knows if it's going to be a book at this point? I mean, I have... Just keep looking out for his just, name. Whatever he's doing, I promise you, you want to know Yeah, it's going to be it. good. John, thank you. We'll see you again soon. Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Well, now you know why I wanted to have John here with us. Um... Before we go to break, you know that I felt it was a total pleasure to have you with me, and thanks for coming on this show. And uh, you are listening to The Bonnie Shear Show. Uh, So please, join the conversation. We are waiting to hear from you. The phone number, grab a pencil now, 323-843-2826, or you can follow on Twitter by going to hashtag B-S-H-E-R radio. Um, Coming up, a shout out from my soapbox, which is pretty much uh, my shout out to those who I think who have gotten it very, very right, followed by my shout down. And that has to do with somebody or something that I think has gone terribly, terribly wrong, and they should be ashamed of themselves. Um, Before we go to break, let's do that with uh, one of my favorite tunes that really, really has a grab on me right now. It's performed by the one and only Judy Garland, And from her dearest self, this song is called Smile. Take it away. Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there's a cloud in the sky you'll get by if you Trace 
of sadness Although a tear may be ever so That's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile if you. That life is still worthwhile if you I don't think it gets any better than that. Um, well, welcome back to the Bonnie Cher Show. Uh, joining me in this segment is my type one co-host, and that is Dave Bo. Gebro. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Bonnie. I just I, I take direction well. I wanted to start off contentiously with you. That's what I live for, Dave. That's why I'm single. Um, <laughs> uh, Dave is from right here in or lives right here in California, and is a member of the T1D community, a recent member, I might add. And um, I asked Dave to please come on in, have a chat with us, and tell us his story. So. Hey, Dave. I was just looking for an excuse to meet you, and I would <laughs> take any that came my way. You knew that. You're a sweet man. So tell <laughs> us your story. I've heard it, and it riveted me um, enough to keep up and follow Dave and what's going on with him. You had a rough start at this, did you? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, in a sense, no, because uh, I didn't have diabetes until much later on in life. But uh, I was misdiagnosed That's as a type I'm 2, mm-hmm. um, which later turned into what I'm to understand is called LADA, latent autoimmune diabetes of adulthood. So basically my beta cells died a slow, painful death over the course of approximately six years. And um, Were you uh, symptomatic? Did, did you know what was going on? Initially? Did you feel anything? I could feel a change in the uh my numbers for sure i mean i um I've but always... you weren't watching your numbers before you had even a type 2 diagnosis no. so my question is do, were you, was there something that brought you in for that test or was it a drive-by finding no it was uh, i definitely was urinating very frequently and insatiably thirsty and then what really brought me in was um i started seeing far better without my glasses on um my my vision changed very noticeably very quickly and that was very scary so um i went in and this quack doctor um uh, took tested my blood 
said you have diabetes through two shoddily Xeroxed uh, sheets of paper at me with things that I shouldn't be eating uh, and then left the room uh, for about 20 minutes. And I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I was so frightened. Um, that was my first. Can I swear? Yeah, I think you already did. That was my first <laughs> shit, doctor. Um, this, of course, brought, did you just bleep me? <laughs> this, this, of course, brought me, this is a long journey that brought me to Dr. Andrew Drexler, who I told, uh, I told uh, yesterday afternoon this was going to be a love-in Drexler love fest. So, Well, as a matter of fact, on top of that, I had lunch with a woman yesterday who's the produce, one of the producers on the human trial which is, of course, about research and another fix for diabetes. And one thing led to another, and she told me she had lived in New York, and turns out she was the patient of Dr. Drexler's. And so I sent him a note last night saying, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we held a meeting of the Andrew Drexler fan club, and we were all so happy. So now you're a card-carrying member. Well, I mean, here's the thing, is that I really do believe that most doctors who have good bedside manners are shitty doctors. It's like they have to have good bedside manner uh, because they you know, lack skill in all the right areas. Um, he... In this particular case with type 1 diabetes, especially with uh, new diagnoses like me, uh, who I'm like shaking like a leaf, you know, with this, trying to figure sure, out how to deal with this new thing. Um, he was very calming. Plus, he has the knowledgeability and, um, and skills to be able to help me through it. So um, really, I can't say enough about, uh, about him and about you because... The most nightmarish aspect of this, I left the job in late February. I figured I would just do the rounds uh, with a couple doctors, get a clean bill of health, look for new work. Uh, this was going to just be a pit stop. And uh, when, when I found out I, had, I now had type 1, uh, it led to all this other stuff and a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. And, you know, trying to, because I'm a very immersive personality, trying to dive into the type one community to find support and finding that maybe I was just looking in the wrong areas, but there were, it was not very forthcoming. Uh, I tried uh, connecting with a lot of people and, and um, I went to a support group that I was waiting weeks to attend and there was only one guy there. Um, and I was just so disgusted. Actually, it led to uh, another uh, new diagnosis uh, patient, person, human being, uh, Rachel Hockman, uh, just put together a, a new support group that's meeting next week called Illanon. Uh, it's going to kind of, it's going to be just a, a diabetes support group. I and mean, is this going to be down in your neck of the woods, which is the Long Beach area? I live in Long Beach. This is going to be actually in uh, Los Angeles. Um, the information is as follows. It is uh, next Thursday. Uh, this will be the first uh, the first meeting of Illinon Thursday, June twenty third, uh, from seven p.m. to ten p.m. in Marina Del Rey. The address is four one zero one Admiralty Way, Marina Del Rey, California nine zero two nine two, and uh, we're looking to rectify what we found to be a lack of um, you know direct support to get people through this. I mean, there, as, as, as we all know, there's, it's not just the, oh, my numbers are high or my numbers are low. There's depression elements that come into it. There's, you know, we have to, you know, go on with our lives, but this is a full-time job. There's a lot. I, you know, that's my line. Diabetes is a full-time job from the yeah. moment you wake up in the morning to your last thought at night. That's what we think about. Yeah. You know, I think a little bit about Neiman Marcus, but for the most part, you know, it, it, those are different numbers. Um, so after now how many? It's only been a couple of months since you and I yeah. first were put together. So yeah, how, I reached out to you and told you I was uh, I was scared to death. Uh, you you had uh, your name had had uh, come by through a mutual friend. And uh, so I reached out directly to you, and you've been awesome. 
Um, You're part of a very cool group of people. It's it, it, it's an odd uh, sort of strange way of having met and being put together. But um, there's a lot of heart yeah. in our community. Um, and it's a difference, I think, when you are dealing diabetic to diabetic as opposed to parents of diabetics, um, caretakers. I mean, they are a group that needs their own group. They right. have a whole different point of view, point of entry, and point of concerns than we do. You know, some of my concern is that y'all are focusing on me too much. You know, I, I really do know how to do this. So I don't need the whole world saying to me, oh, Bonnie, can you eat that? No, but I really got up this morning and thought, I'd like to be really, really sick. Schmuck. I mean, you know, what kind of thing is that to say? People don't think about that. But it does take a one to understand a one. How wonderful is it to not have to explain? How could you explain what low blood sugar feels like? I mean, the worst if panic you say, attack you've ever felt in your life. But what if you've never had a panic attack? You see what I'm saying? There's, but you say to a, a type one, geez, I just had a hypo. And they don't think you mean a needle. You know? They understand what that is and what that does. And I think that to find a group, you know, a group even. A soul. Well, I came up through, uh, I've been in the 12-step program for over 10 years. Okay, so I'm, I'm used to that, uh, that level of um, you know, kind of like throwing up your hands like I can't do it myself. I need help from other people. And, and knowing that you need the help, isn't that? Makes you stronger. That's it. Right. That's it. And there will come a time when somebody is going to hear about a new diabetic and they're going to know you and they're going to say, you know who you need to talk to? You need to talk to Dave. And that's part of our deal. That's why I have the show. You know, the celebrity part of it, that's a lot of fun. But this is what we're here to do. You know, and that's why I ask you all, please, if you have any comments about your own type one or something that you've heard on the show, please call us. You can write to me. Let's become involved together as a group. Um, you never know what you're going to learn and whose heart you might touch. And I have a feeling that you're going to be somebody that we can all look up to dave you've got I hope you so. have a phenomenal attitude sometimes and my attitude sucks and i don't know anybody who doesn't your friend the drummer that's not an he's got a oh, great if, attitude. if you tell me that i'll never hire him again <laughs> no he's got a great attitude <laughs> he's got to be crazy never... sometimes <laughs> i don't think i would so. have to smack him down you know <laughs> yeah but really but you know we all come to where we are, but what our story is, and everybody has a story. That's not his story. He has mm -hmm. what, but who knows what other stories yeah, are? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But for this portion of the program, my concern is the well-being and feeling that you're not alone in this. I'll tell you, before I did this show and before like this last year when I started my website. I think I only knew two type 1s in my whole life. And I've been a T1 almost 50 years. Um, now, there's so much out there. And, of course, we didn't have Internet. You know? So now to be able to take the ability to be able to re reach out. And I know what I did in November. I looked through all of the people that were, you know, potential friends. If they were dressed in blue and it said, you know, type one, boy, they were my friends. You know, as, as opposed to the men who now write me and tell me that they are in the CIA serving in Afghanistan. <laughs> There's a lot of them. They're, they may must all have my name because none of them have any spelling prowess, nor do they have grammar. And my thinking is, if you're really doing that, you should have had better grammar. You know? yeah. But the point being. I mean, 
You never know. So when I heard from you, this was a pleasure. I mean, I'm sorry it was about diabetes, but at least you weren't pawning yourself off as a CIA guy. And I was going to say, you better study some more. This um, could be a very extended, protracted scam. I may just hit you back for Afghani scam cash right after this show. You too? Yeah. <laughs> I tried it last <laughs> night. <laughs> so I'm financing today's show. Um as of today, this very day, what are your biggest concerns? Um, honestly, uh, is well, let me think. I think right off the bat, you know, I just came off of a period of I wanted to see how many I, I've been a runner for many years, I've run three marathons, and um, I wanted to see how. Uh, in unbroken succession of runs, as many in a row as I could do, um, would affect my blood. And I did 14 in a row, and my my blood for three or four days was perfect. I mean, it was smooth sailing 100 the whole way for four days. And I really started getting cocky, like I'm cured. <laughs> um, in addition to that, I was eating, you know, almost straight up paleo so you know no uh, unhealthy carbs and um then that was then it started to get it you know the way that it was before so um you know because i had to take a break from running because i was you know old <laughs> yes i was old i was so much older than i'm so much younger than that now um i am uh I'm afraid that it's going to, um, at you know, at a moment's notice uh, and beyond my comprehension and control, um, you know, veer off into a place where I can't control it. Um, I am um, I'm concerned about uh, my attitude because I've found that it's become a lot easier for me to become uh, insular and um, you know, sort of hibernating in my brain and yeah. feeling alone. Mm -hmm. um, even, you know, being part of the type one community, uh, I still feel more, a little bit more divided than I did before. Um, and that definitely sucks. It's early on. So I'm, you know, I'm hoping that uh, as it becomes more commonplace and normalized, that it becomes less of an issue. But it's, you know, it's definitely a thing. Uh, I think that um, not not being a medical person myself, I am not a physician. Um, my feeling is that sometimes we hang on too much to the numbers, and we freak out when we see an occasional high. Um, you know, there there are many times after a meal that you don't, you know, and certainly before the CGMs, who knew. If you had a Chinese meal or something, and all of a sudden you've really gone up to 400, and then your insulin kicks in and it matches up, I think that you have to keep all of that in mind. Um, you can go the route where you never push the card at all. I happen not to be that person. You know, when you I, say push the card, what do you I mean? I mean, never have any carbs. You know, it'd be so very low in your carbs because you're so afraid of your numbers. No, you don't want a sustained high any more than you want a sustained low. But to flip no, but out, when I when I go for the potato, when I go for bread, things like that, so I have that much instead of that much. I can't do that. Yes, you really can. No, I can't. Yes, you can. No, I can. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah, try. Maybe I can. Yeah. Because it's like you don't go to Disneyland every day, right? So I have it. I don't want to get killed by an alligator. Yeah, well, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> I'm still sick over the last one. Orlando is, anyway. I, I, I yeah, let's not even get sick. We'll have to play Judy Garland Smile again. That's why I played it. <laughs> That's why I played I know. it. That just hurt too much. Um, you, you know, I think the most difficult thing, it's not the specific numbers, going back to what we were just talking about, it's not the specific numbers are getting hung up on, on high numbers, it's the idea 
of an autoimmune disease that my body is trying to kill me. Oh well, lots of luck that with that. Thanks. That that was Holy years of Christ. therapy. <laughs> That's been years. I'm did glad. I do? I'm glad you got over it. Some of us are just coming to terms with Look, that. Thank I'm, you very I'm much. I'm rolling up on 50 years, so one would hope, you know. But believe me, there are days that I'm not so uh, toasty and rosy about this. And it's I've horrible. spoken to you on those days. Yes, you have. Yes, yes I'm you privileged have. to say. <laughs> well, that's scary. Um, I hate to end this, but I really have to. There and really is no true end to this. So, Well, that's true. Uh, like him. I really <laughs> like him. Uh, thanks, Dave, for sitting in with me today. Thank you for having uh, me. My pleasure. And uh, if any of our fellow T1s would like to sit in that chair and be my Type 1 co-host, it's very simple. Write me. Send me a note at bonnieshare.com. I'll answer you. We'll find a date. It really is just that simple. Love to have you here with me. Um, it is time for my soapbox. Uh, first of all, I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of you um, for, we've just had a record-breaking number of viewers and listeners in the month of May. And so my heartfelt thanks, my most heartfelt thanks um, for being loyal, for tuning in, and for telling your friends to tune in also. Um, it, just, it just takes me to another place. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you all. Uh, and while I'm at it, um, a huge shout out to the City of Hope and to a friend of the Bonnie Sher Show, Boomer Life, uh, type one part of part of our type one community who has been a co-host with me, and that's Roger Sparks. As we speak, Roger is a patient at City of Hope, about to receive his second round of islet cells. Um, my last words to him last night were, uh, my mind is blown. Can you imagine that you're not going to have to take insulin anymore? Um, it's pretty damn exciting. And he's a friend of the show and a friend of mine, and I know he would be a friend of yours, so let's all keep a really good thought for Roger. Now my shout down and I really am very sorry to have to say this um, but the shout down is to Dexcom um, a number of weeks ago I reported on the fact that they had sent out notifications that there was going to be and was in place a recall on the receivers uh, the issue being that it did not sound in that lowest low category, I think at under 55, and that if you had that problem, there was a particular number for you to call, and they would you know, take care of matters. Well, I did have the problem. I did send mine in, only to find out that they sent me back exactly the same thing. Um, it was a new receiver, but there was no guarantee that it was going to sound either. I found that odd. So I reached out to Dexcom. Um, I had four different calls. I was assured that the marketing department had taken this on, that they were going to rewrite the emails. They were going to rewrite on their Dexcom notification page, as well as sending out by post this notification. Um, I am very sorry to say that none of this has happened. I was promised air uh, and not air time. Um, now, when I went and checked out the Dexcom site, they have removed the notification page altogether. Uh, um, one thing I did find out in doing an investigation is that not only have they not received FDA approval, 
for this new receiver, but they have not yet submitted it to the FDA. That I don't understand either. Um, I, I, of course, asked them if it was a matter of postage. Did they need a little boost? Um, I'm not laughing. I just was too shocked to deal with it. Um, I don't know. It, uh, I really love the concept. I love the way the sensor helps me. I have become addicted to it. And I'm terribly sad now that I don't have its use. So hopefully Dexcom is going to get it together and I'll be able to come back on and do a shout out to them as opposed to a shout down. I always did before. Come on, I'm rooting for you, Dexcom. Come through for us. Well, that's my show for today. And I hope you'll all come back next Thursday, same time, same place, for another 50-minute tour of the work of world of celebrity, the great boomer life, and the life of type 1 diabetes. Uh, please remember not to eat the microphone. Please. <laughs> Too many carbs. Um, remember, uh, you can follow us at be share, hashtag be share radio. You might even want to go on to Facebook and like the Bonnie Sings Lena, that's L-E-N-A, page. Um, there's also Bonnie's World. There's just Bonnie everywhere. So come on in, join the group. Um, again, I want to thank today's guests for helping to make this show one that I absolutely adore doing and uh, sharing their time. A special note of thanks to Corey Bone and Crown and Anchor Jewelry. It is Corey who supplies me with the jewelry that I wear on the show um, in order to follow him and let him make something for you. Uh, Go to my go to my web page, uh, my website and drop down to the bottom and you'll see a link to click on to for Corey Bone and Crown and Anchor Jewelry. And uh, today's piece is something that he reworked, which was taking an existing stone that had been part of somebody's earrings, taking that apart and reworked it into a beautiful necklace that he has set in 18 karat white gold with little baby diamonds and then a nice one karat baby. I wish this were mine. But uh, it could be yours. Um, so for now and for my friends, new and old, um, probably you already know of my affinity for Sammy Davis Jr. He was my mentor. He was my friend. And uh, Sammy, if there are speakers up in heaven, man, this one's for you. Take us out. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, whether I find a place in this world or not, Never belong. I gotta be me. I gotta be me. What else can I be but what I am? I want to live, not merely survive. Of this dream of life that keeps me alive. I gotta be me. I gotta be me. The dream that I see makes me what I am. That far away prize, a world of success. Settle down.
somebody else if I'm not right for me. I gotta be free. 